In the early 20th century, as the world marveled at the dawn of electricity and radio, a quiet inventor from Pennsylvania stepped into the spotlight with a bold claim. He had harnessed the Earth's magnetic forces to create limitless energy. His name was Lester Hendershot, and his invention, the Hendershot Generator, promised to revolutionize the world. This is the story of a man whose vision captivated imaginations, sparked controversy, and ended in tragedy. A tale of genius, ambition, and the high cost of challenging the established order. Lester James Hendershot was born in 1899 in Hindman, Pennsylvania, a small town where ambition often outstripped opportunity. From a young age, Hendershot was drawn to the mysteries of electricity. As a boy, he tinkered with wires and batteries, fascinated by the invisible currents that powered the modern age. With little formal education, he relied on self-study and an insatiable curiosity, poring over books on physics and engineering. By the 1920s, Hendershot had become a skilled mechanic and electrician, working odd jobs while dreaming of a breakthrough that would change the world. It was a time of boundless optimism in America. Radio was king, airplanes were taking flight, and inventors were hailed as heroes. Hendershot, now in his 20s, saw an opportunity to join their ranks. Inspired by pioneers like Nikola Tesla, he became obsessed with the idea of free energy, power drawn not from coal or oil, but from the Earth itself. He believed the planet's magnetic field could be tapped to generate electricity without fuel. This radical idea would define his life's work and set him on a collision course with the energy industry. Lester Hendershot's fascination with aviation, sparked in his youth during the early days of flight, played a pivotal role in shaping his inventive pursuits. He had taken up flying in 1925 and became particularly intrigued by the navigational challenges pilots faced, especially the limitations of magnetic compasses which were often unreliable in the vibrating, metal-laden environment of an airplane. Inspired to improve aviation technology, he set out to design a more efficient compass that could better harness the Earth's magnetic field. This quest led him to experiment with magnetic resonance and electromagnetic induction, sparking a radical idea. If the Earth's magnetic field could guide a compass, could it also be tapped to generate power? Drawing from his aviation-inspired experiments, Hendershot began to envision a motor that utilized these magnetic forces, laying the conceptual groundwork for his fuel-less generator. Life being stranger than fiction, it was a bandit's bullet that led to Hendershot building his first prototype. One evening walking home from work, Hendershot was confronted by a mugger. Instead of handing over his wallet, he ran, and the mugger shot at him, clipping his ankle. During his time recovering at home, Hendershot passed the time building a model airplane for his son. The boy wanted the propeller to spin, which got Hendershot thinking about his fuelless motor idea. He constructed a small motor with a specific coil configuration. He intended to get a battery to run the motor, but to his amazement, the propeller began to spin with no apparent power source. By 1927, Hendershot had developed the first prototype of his generator, a device he claimed could produce electricity by harnessing geomagnetic currents. The Hendershot generator was an odd contraption, a jumble of coils, capacitors, and magnets arranged in a seemingly haphazard design. Yet, when Hendershot demonstrated it, the results were astonishing. Witnesses reported that the device powered light bulbs, radios, and even small motors without any visible power source. In the spring of 1928, the Hendershot generator captured the attention of the famed aviator, Charles Lindbergh, during a secretive demonstration at Selfridge Air Force Base in Michigan. Lindbergh, a mechanical enthusiast with a keen interest in pushing the boundaries of flight, was intrigued by Hendershot's claim that his fuelless generator could harness the Earth's magnetic field to produce electricity. Reports suggest Lindbergh witnessed the device powering small appliances and a model airplane, sparking visions of aircraft that could fly longer distances without the weight of fuel. While Lindbergh's involvement was downplayed to protect his public image, his associate Major Thomas Lanfear insisted he had no financial stake. Still, the aviator's presence at the test fueled speculation. The generator's inner workings were shrouded in mystery. Hendershot claimed it operated by aligning with the Earth's magnetic field, using resonant frequencies to draw energy from the atmosphere. To skeptics, his explanations sounded like pseudoscience, but to supporters, they were the words of a visionary. Hendershot guarded his designs closely, fearing theft by powerful corporations. This secrecy, while protective, 
would fuel doubts about his credibility. Newspapers hailed Hendershot as the next Edison, and he received offers from companies eager to commercialize his invention. But with fame came scrutiny. Scientists demanded rigorous testing, and energy companies, wary of a device that threatened their profits, began to question its legitimacy. As pressure mounted, Hendershot's life took a darker turn. He claimed to receive threatening letters and phone calls, warning him to abandon his work. In one chilling incident, he alleged that a group of men visited his home, demanding his blueprints. Hendershot's paranoia grew, and he became increasingly erratic, refusing to share technical details even with potential partners. His demonstrations, once public spectacles, became rare and tightly controlled. Rumors swirled that the generator was a hoax, powered by hidden batteries or sleight of hand. Yet those who witnessed it, including credible engineers, insisted the device worked as claimed. By the early 1930s, Hendershot's fortunes had plummeted. The Great Depression gripped America, drying up investment for speculative projects. His refusal to collaborate with mainstream scientists alienated potential allies, and his cryptic explanations frustrated the press. In 1930, a disastrous demonstration in New York ended in failure when the generator mysteriously stopped working, leading to accusations of fraud. Hendershot claimed sabotage, but the damage was done. His reputation in tatters, he retreated to Pittsburgh, where he struggled to support his young family. The strain of his work took a toll on Hendershot's health and psyche. Friends described him as a man haunted by his own vision, convinced that powerful forces were conspiring to suppress his invention. He spoke of government agents and corporate spies, and his once optimistic demeanor gave way to bitterness. In the mid-1930s, he suffered a nervous breakdown, exacerbated by financial hardship and relentless criticism. Yet, even in his darkest moments, Hendershot never abandoned his generator. He continued to tinker in his workshop, refining designs and dreaming of a comeback. In the 1940s and 1950s, Hendershot made sporadic attempts to revive interest in his work. He collaborated with a small group of enthusiasts, including his son, Mark Hendershot, who later championed his father's legacy. But the scientific community had moved on, embracing nuclear power and dismissing free energy claims as fantasy. Hendershot's health deteriorated, and by the late 1950s, he was a shadow of his former self. In 1960, at the age of 61, he died under mysterious circumstances. Some accounts suggest suicide, while others claim he was poisoned or driven to despair by his enemies. The truth remains elusive, adding to the enigma of his life. After Hendershot's death, his generator faded into obscurity, but it never disappeared entirely. In the 1970s, amid the energy crisis, alternative researchers rediscovered his work, hailing him as a martyr of suppressed technology. His son, Mark, attempted to recreate the generator, claiming partial success but facing similar skepticism. Today, the Hendershot generator lives on in the annals of fringe science where enthusiasts pore over its schematics and debate its potential. While mainstream science dismisses it as unfeasible, the device's allure endures. Lester Hendershot was a rebel, a dreamer who believed he could tap the Earth's hidden pulse. His life, marked by triumph and tragedy, invites us to ponder the cost of pursuing the impossible. For in the shadow of his strange machine lies a timeless truth. The greatest inventions are often born from the courage to imagine what others cannot.